Hey Blenders, it's Sean, and I'm back to introduce you to a bonus episode of the Real Blend Podcast. Look at us, back into full swing for 2023. We've got a premium episode, uh, there'll be a full show on Friday, and now a bonus episode for you guys to listen to. Because this week, uh, there's a new movie that's hitting theaters, and it's called Missing. And if you didn't realize it, uh, it is a sequel to the John Show movie Searching, that came out a couple of years ago and sort of took the industry by storm. It was one of these... It's not quite found footage. It's uh, it's somebody using technology, uh, the internet, and and different security cameras and and ways to track uh, our movement around in different environments uh, to find somebody who has potentially gone missing. And so the team behind that took the concept of searching and has applied it to a new film in the franchise, and it's called Missing. And the way that this one sort of plays out, you can tell that they're absolutely building a series of stories uh, that they want to put together to keep dropping different characters into this uh, formula to see how they work. And this time out, it's uh, Storm Reed, who is playing a daughter who's searching for her missing mother, uh, who's played by Nia Long. And so because of that, we had an opportunity to sit down with uh, three of the producers behind Missing, who were also integral to the com um, the creation of Searching. So this is uh, Sev Ohanian, it's Anish Chaganti, and then Natalie Kasabian. And uh, they were willing to sit down with us and discuss not only a lot of the work that went into searching and also the surprises that they encountered uh, when that movie came out, because it came out in um, limited theaters. It came out of Sundance with some buzz, but then it was made for, as they're going to say, on a shoestring budget and then went on to become very successful for uh, for Sony Pictures. So. They get into the, the ways that they wanted to make Missing feel different than the original film. Uh, a lot of the obstacles that they encountered in testing to make sure that the technology that they're using in the film would work in real life. And a lot of other really fascinating conversations that they had when putting Missing together. So uh, without further ado, a bonus episode of Real Blend on behalf of the new film Missing. Excellent. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Hello. Hey, hey. Hello again. Hello. You guys are our first official uh, Real Blend interview for 2023. Congratulations on helping us kick off the year. <laughs> I'm a huge cool. fan. I told some of you guys separately earlier today, but like I'm a massive fan. So this is really cool. Whoa, that's amazing. Yes. Thank you. And I also tell them Natalie. about the podcast all the she time. Does. Let me tell you, this. Hey, you, you got to listen this week. This week we have, uh, what, is it Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks? This, is he, yeah, he's, he's he, this, that's this week. You got to listen to this into the episode this Friday. Hell yeah. And then y'all will be next week, I think. So it'll be perfect. Awesome. Natalie, that's a great way to throw somebody off when they come into a Zoom room too. Sorry. To tell them that you're a fan of their work because at that point, <laughs> I'm just like, what? Start sorry, questioning what? all of your questions. I just couldn't <laughs> not geek out. It's like really yeah. cool. So good. We're good, geeking good. out. Oh well, yeah, we're going to nerd out. Yeah. Yes, let's definitely kick that off. Um, and Natalie, I actually want to start with you because I, I, I'm curious how you guys settled on the title uh, Missing because it's obviously part of a larger franchise now but it's not a title that links it back to searching in any way, shape or form. And so, but you've kind of established a precedent at this point now that any other films in the franchise are going to have to be one word that's associated with things being gone. So I want to know what the conversations were that you guys had. That, that, that was thing. literally the conversation. No. Um, yeah. So it started off with like, do we or do we not keep searching in the title? And there's been this question of like, how do we bring in new audiences without alienating the fans of the first film? And I think one of the things we we drilled down on is this team especially likes one word titles and we want to hold on to like an active word. So it was really about like finding something with the ing, although the person is missing. It's not the most active word, <laughs> but something that, you know, connotates some kind of like action to some degree. And it was on we we, we were throwing out like millions of titles at one point. I mean, yeah. let's let's talk about some of the, the had, top ones. Yeah. We had like we we at for our first our first attempt was to try to create with the word searching, kind of like 10 Cloverfield Lane, you know, where they would oh. use the word clover, like Cloverfield yeah. in different ways. Right, but right. every we couldn't find a, a phrase beyond searching abroad, but yeah. we, that that felt like active and modern and a, like a, a modern movie searching abroad had like a, a different vibe to it. Like it felt like a rom-com potentially, like looking for love <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> no, 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 chan no chance of calling the movie plain, right? You didn't, that, that oh, wasn't yeah, it. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, we were all, we were in a movie theater when we saw that trailer together and it was great. Yeah. But we, I, at one point we were playing with, do we put like searching colon something yeah. like searching reckoning or searching unknown or or something then, comp a searching story right yeah. right like we we played with that oh, at one point cool. we got really excited for like a brief moment about searching incognito 
And we were trying, we made a whole presentation to the studio. And, but then we were like, do, do people know what incognito, like, yeah. I, I, like, I don't know if we all knew what incognito meant. I mean, guys, we're not going <laughs> to lie to you guys. This has been a long movie to work on. And it's been a lot of work, but nothing has been harder than yeah. landing on the title. Yeah, yeah. the title, <laughs> the title yeah. zooms were the most frustrating zooms yeah. when internally we would have like <laughs> the three of us plus Will and Nick. And we would be like, all right, in this hour, we're going to set a... Set a title, and then we would just end up talking, and then be like, "Okay, we got to meet eventually about this in a couple of days." And we just kept doing that, and it would just be like, "We're getting nowhere." So we had called it "Searching Two for so long while yeah. we were shooting and yeah. whatnot. But uh, now, yeah, now we're the uh, preeminent uh, Jaren franchise of the twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Ryan Johnson the next one. <laughs> Ryan Johnson's looking at Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, and going, "What the hell? Why did yeah. I put Knives <laughs> Out in it?" <laughs> Hey, what do we call yeah. the next one then? If we're if, if we're searching, missing, what do we do next? I like, I like finding. Finding po- it's oh. positive. Uh, positive. <laughs> Someone yeah. just got an associate producer credit. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I want to talk to you guys because I've always heard all these stories um, about what Apple will and will not allow in terms of like story. Like speaking of Ryan Johnson, I always heard this rumor that people were able to figure out because I guess they won't let villains have iPhones and people were able to figure out that Chris Evans is the killer in Knives Out because he's the only one with an Android. So I'm sort of curious just in terms of like uh, less of a, a technological, but more of like a storytelling front, what sort of conversations you have to have with Apple about what can and cannot be shown in terms of what characters are doing with their products? I mean, it's it's a lot of conversations, <laughs> a lot of internal conversations, a lot of working with lawyers, a lot of working with, you know, corporate people. We actually on on searching the original searching, which was an independent film, made for like $7, we ended up getting this lawyer who represented like family guy. So it was like, he, he knew exactly the right way to create an argument that we can do it properly. I mean, I, I don't know about the whole villain thing that Knives Out had or other movies have, because I don't know if that necessarily applied to searching. We, yeah, we, we, well, well, we do. Yeah, we did. Does, doesn't There's. Oh, mm, doesn't how I would. I don't know why. Yeah, but anyway. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's about cops, though. So yeah. There, yes. like, there is somewhat a rule that we follow per, per the lawyers and the people yes. that are smarter than us. That like if a character is going to do something nefarious, yeah. the mm. UI or the app that they use it should be something that you create. So it should be like an original thing. Interesting. So there's a bunch oh, of apps and things in this film that we created and, and made up. Not always for the nefarious. Yeah. Reason, sometimes right, search, right, right. Searching, we did it for Ucast, which was yes. uh, yeah. that like live stream or the live video blogging kind of website that we made. But our goal is always like this movie falls apart if it's like face space and and tick tick and you know what I, yeah. whatever like it just falls apart you know like it's supposed to tick. these movies are like perfect time capsules of what our our era and and the more that we can do to make any argument that that we can use these in a real way i think we just were mm-hmm. like okay whatever we'll we'll shade it a different shade of red if we have to uh, if we can get cnn just yeah. a quick follow up um, before before this question, I was going to ask about like the filming of it. But like WhatsApp, for example, just going off of what Jake's question was, like, does do, does WhatsApp pay you guys to be featured like that in the film? Is it or is it just kind of fair use? Dude, if they want to, yeah. like, we can yeah. 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 My favorite thing, yeah. My favorite thing is when people comment like, "This movie likes it was sponsored by Google or Apple." It's like, please, like, yeah. we'll, we'll happily take it. We have no pride. But no, in, in our case, no. We've been doing it all entirely just on our own. And like Anish said, the goal is to kind of create a grounded experience so that feels realistic and authentic because that's what's going to help the thrills at the end of the day. It's always mm. been about that um, more than the tech. So our, our podcast, obviously, we, we, we are big into filmmaking. We like to take our listeners on a journey of like how movies are made. And one of the conversations we were having earlier uh, was about the the filmmaking and how the cameras worked. And what's fascinating about this movie is you're basically always on a certain camera. There's a certain viewpoint that you have. You could either be moving across the screen, but it's very calculated in a very interesting way. And a lot of the misdirects uh, later on in the film actually come from your perspective of where you are and what camera you're looking at and things like that can you talk a little bit about the filming of it like how the facetime calls worked or like what what those like the ring camera we talked about earlier but how how were those shot and orchestrated were the actors talking to each other i know it's a loaded question it's a big question but i'm just curious kind of how it all worked it's very very interesting it also plays into the narrative and the mystery of it i felt yeah i mean i think first and foremost the thing that was really important to to will and nick and i think something that we tried to do on searching is making it feel authentic. So the approach for like all the cameras was 
if we could shoot it on, if something's being portrayed through an iPhone, if we could shoot it on an iPhone, great. But if not, what camera can we use that'll get us kind of close to that, but give us some flexibility to be cinematic at the same time? So there's this constant like dance. Um, and our DP, Steve Holleran, was like obviously huge in figuring all that stuff out. We had like 10 different cameras on this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a lot to juggle. Um, but yeah. On, I mean, on top of that, we have basically like you have the. Are, are you asking basically about the the physical cameras on set, but or also about the POV of the movie itself, which is almost done in post? That's kind of what I'm curious about is like you go in between the shots that we're seeing on the screen sure. and then there is there is this POV yeah. movement that we get for the character, which is which is almost like it not not that it breaks the wall, but it it almost like makes it more interesting and immersive in a weird way. I don't know how to explain it. Well, I mean, like. The truth is, like, searching was not the first movie set on computer screens, but when we had the opportunity to make that film, we really did want to kind of break from the precedents because so often the movies before were more like screen recordings. Like, if you've seen Unfriended, which is a really fun horror movie, Mm -hmm. the whole thing is one wide shot. There's no camera movements. There's no editing. There's nothing. It's just all real time. For us, like, it was so important that if we were going to make that film, we had to make it cinematic and emotional, and that meant utilizing the hundred past years of cinematic techniques of, like, zooms and edits and all that stuff. So to figure that out, like, you know, to talk, what what you guys are talking about, the camera movements, we, you know, with both films, we had relatively short shooting periods. So we needed to go into those periods as ready as we could. What we ended up doing was um, we kind of edited the entire film before we shot a single frame. So just to just to like clarify, like what that meant was our editors on on searching. It was Will and Nick on this movie was Ari and Austin. Their first day of editing, where normally an editor is like, you know, inputting footage from the last couple of days of filming, they had a blank screen. And it was their job to literally start assembling images and screenshot in Google and starting to make little things happen. And we had the directors and even the editors performing as the other characters in the script. And as they did that, we were slowly coming up with roughly what the movie would look like. And once that was kind of finalized, when we were filming, when we had those cameras that Nat was talking about, we already had an idea of like where this fictional camera was going to move so that when Uh. Will and Nick were directing Storm, there was this already this this intentionality as far as like when she looks this way, we know what window she's looking at. Or even when it comes to the costume Mm. design and production design, how can we complement the colors of Instagram on her computer, for instance? I mean, all of that was just purely about going into production with as much prep as possible. So it felt again, intentional. Yeah. If you look at a sequence, like um, the ending of the, uh, you guys have seen the film. Yes. Okay. So the, if you look at this sequence, like the ending, um, which is like multiple cameras operating at once. So much of that is just like prep work as to like, which, where do we want, which thing happening? And like, how can you see the most in the, in the right way? All of that is planned and worked on and retried and retried and retried until we like, what we're looking at. And then on set, oftentimes the actors are acting across from a blank screen. So we have like a laptop, if it's a a FaceTime chat, we'll have a laptop Mm. rig that has lights on it, cameras above mimicking where the webcam is. And then Will and Nick, what they did on this film, we had two tools, like either there was a grid that had like numbers and letters. So they would use that for eyelines for like (laughs) Storm and Nia. So super technical, but it's like, nope, E6, like that's where the desktop icon is. Or sometimes in like the crazy scenes, they would actually have a fake desktop with the folders so that Storm could realize like, oh, I'm going to look here and then I'm answering the call from Javi. And it's like, it's a crazy challenge for the actor because it's, obviously there's no human there, but they're also like doing these bizarro eye lines that are like, you you know, you barely turn to the left and it looks huge when the camera's right in front of your face. So it's it's a challenge. Everyone's like relearning. Their job. Eat your heart out, James Cameron. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, it, people don't realize this is incredible. How they like, they, I even th- I thought I saw a dolly zoom in there at one point when they yeah. were. I, I'm pretty sure I saw a vertigo shot. I'm like, they just did a vertigo shot on a computer screen. I'm like, hell yes, this is amazing. <laughs> you go, you go online and like every time you see a out of every 500 comments, there'll be two where they go like. Man, it must be nice to make a movie over the weekend. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> dude, if only, you know? Like three years in the making. Three years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Also, Storm and I had a conversation about just, have you guys ever, like, mistakenly turned on a camera on your laptop and you don't realize that you're, like, looking yeah. at yourself kind of thing? Yeah. And it, it just looks so awkward when you see yourself, how you look in front of a laptop. And yet now your protagonist, your main protagonist, has to be doing it all the time. Mm. Um, I want to, we wouldn't be talking about this movie if searching didn't do as well as it did. And I want you guys to take me back to, because I think the original one, didn't it open in, like, 
10 locations or nine locations. Um, what was that opening weekend like when you guys started to, to see how well it was performing uh, and how well it was connecting with the audience? Take this one. I mean, it was a dream come true. You know, like we made that movie with no promises, no guarantees. We had no idea if anyone was even going to like want to see the movie, let alone what it did. And we were so lucky. We got into Sundance and we won all these awards and we had this great bidding war and Sony came in like aside from the like the financials of the deal. Like there was so much passion from the execs at Sony. Like they really were like, we're going to put this movie across the globe. And they really did that. Mm. And and I remember opening weekend, it was a limited release on purpose because we wanted to kind of ha- build word of mouth over a couple of weeks before we opened wide. Man, I think we were just like crashing movie theaters and giving impromptu Q&As. Like and on Twitter constantly. It was, you know, I remember we were on a big group <laughs> chat and, and Anisha's dad, he just kept updating oh, yeah. us with like, oh, yeah. he would yeah. just randomly text like <laughs> 50 million. We're like, you know, Mr. Chaganty, what is that? He's like, 100 million. Like it was like, oh, that's how much we're going to make. Got it. Thank you. I mean, it was, it was so wonderful, man, because it was... <laughs> It was years of work with no guarantees. My dad would my dad would go in I grew up in San Jose. He put these, he printed out, he made on his <laughs> word documents of like that said like local talent debut film, put the poster up, and then he would put them up <laughs> at the Starbucks and everything. And it, it just felt like such a mm-hmm. it was a fairy tale, you know? Like we like when I landed in Sundance, I literally had six hundred dollars in my savings account, and I was like, "I'm so screwed. This movie, something has to happen with this movie." And wow. like, it just it felt like from that moment on, it, we we just got on this ride. Then everybody kept discovering this movie. It was, it was a very very surreal experience, and it's weird just being here talking about like similar concepts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I, feel, I feel very very blessed to that people liked it. It's crazy. I Absolutely. think at one point we were all. I think Anish borrowed money from Sev. Oh, yeah, and yeah. We Sev, were all borrowing. Sev borrowed money from me. Yeah. We like, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. Great story. If, if, if I ever go missing, I want your dad to be the person out there like yeah, putting yeah. signs up because it sounds like he is dedicated, which I, I appreciate <laughs> if that. If you're in San Jose, they'll find you. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you guys mentioned uh, how, very much how, how much these movies are really great sort of uh, time capsules for the technology that we're using at that time. And honestly, one of my favorite pieces of nostalgia is the old like dial up AOL sound, you know, that we used to have to, you know, that I, you, whenever I tell, you know, young kids, you know, if you wanted to get on the Internet, you had to tell your mom to get off the phone. You know, that was there was no way, you know, those little small details. Is there a way to do a movie like this set in the late 90s, or early 2000s, with, or, or would it take eight hours just because of the nature of how, how long the Internet took to do anything at that time? We'd have to have massive time montages. Yeah, I think it'd, it'd be like us. I, I feel like our original instinct it was could. we had this, but it was for a sequence. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you like open the movie on, you know, yeah. like and then like had one key exchange and then flashed forward was uh, some of our original ideas for the opening yeah. number one. But but even for this one, I remember when when we when we initially, you know, when we ultimately realized we we're going to make this movie. It was the three of us in, in an office with a big whiteboard. And we like, you know, I remember we wrote like, it's got to be like a thriller. It's got to have a family element, theme of connection, you know, inclusion. Like these are the core tenets of the movie for us. But it was like, what else can, you know, we weren't going to make another John, you know, another Taken style, you know, David Kim looking for another mm-hmm. child. So we had like seven ideas. And I think at one point we were talking about doing like potential. You guys remember this? This Godfather 2 pitch of like. God somebody two somebody pitch. looking for like a parent that's been gone but like we're flashing back to like 30 oh, years yeah, ago yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah like like, yeah. We, like we were playing with that as a concept and this and that and we've had Ooh. so many pitches but you know who, who knows i mean that i i love the idea of like even in, in missing there's a brief sequence where you're kind of looking at something from 12 years ago like it, mm-hmm. it makes you lean forward because you know like only on a computer screen movie can you have just the aesthetic of what you're watching conveys so much meaning, you know, like it, it's fun. Like that, I mean, that sounds like a fun challenge. Someone else just got an associate producer credit. too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask about this because I find this interesting. So like, as I watched the film to me, and I, and I could have this wrong, there was a juxtaposition between this idea of how great technology can be and how terrible it can be um, in terms of like, you know, while we're on our phones too much and what we're doing and we're not interacting with people as much as in person as much, but then at the same time, 
the technical advances that helped her actually, you know, go through this storyline. So I'm just wondering how you find that balance, because at the end of the day, you know, I think a lot of people have a lot of psychological problems with social media and the way they're on their phones. But at the same time, there's so many things that it can do for us that can help us. And I just wonder, like, was that a was that a, a message you were kind of going for was finding that balance of like, hey, it's not all black and white. It, there's there's a there's a middle ground here. I mean, you speak to this best. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny because we had this question a lot with 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 searching, you know, and and the one of the objectives with that film was, you know, at, at that moment when we were making it that that film, it was like an era of Black Mirror and so many like dystopian like stories about technology where it always felt like uh, the tech went too far and something yeah. bad happened, you know, and and it was it, you know, I. I spent, my parents are, are software engineers. I worked at Google and it just felt like the whole world of technology was, uh, was focused in a negative side in, in, in film when in reality, like it's just like a tool and it can, a tool can be used for putting a nail inside of a door or it can be used for like hurting someone, you know? And it just like, mm. we could use it any specific way we wanted to. And I think that themes, those themes naturally carried over. You know, it's funny cause this movie's opening up in a time when we have a story about an artificial intelligence toy, you know, doing wrecking havoc on a home, you know, so it's it's we still it's easy to take technology and push it to the scary limits. I think it's much more interesting, at least for us in this group, to find a story that can say, hey, like, yeah, I can kill, but it can also connect to. I, don't know, I yeah. smell a crossover. I smell a crossover between Megan and Megan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Down the line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting that you say that too, because I, I feel like with Missing p- particularly, there were so many times where I felt like maybe you'd written the character into the corner or the character had been written into a corner. Um, but the way out never took me out of the story. I was always right. like, oh yeah, that actually feels like this could be something that that existed. So where, how do you guys balance the line between, well, it's a story we could just write in anything we want to versus, oh, this actually is technology. Uh, that a, a person could use if they were actually going down a rabbit hole like this. I mean, if I had a dollar for every, every time, time you guys... Every, no, like, Sam says it. Yeah. Every t- we write ourselves into a corner. Yeah, they, <laughs> that's their specialty, these guys. But no, I mean, I think we like half the time we're, they're coming up with stuff or, or Will and Nick, who who wrote the screenplay based off a treatment that these guys did, uh, we're oftentimes like pulling up the tech to figure out because so much of what we want to do with these movies is I think we've all seen tech in movies where it feels not real and it's such a part of our everyday lives i think there's for me at least there's nothing more frustrating than watching a movie that's portraying like text or phone or ui and it you just don't buy it it's like their first message yeah always the text message i'm like that's the first message you're just like did no one (laughs) edit like did no one look out for this so we always want it to feel real and and authentic because it it would just take the viewer out of the movie otherwise because it's so it's the canvas we're we're painting with. So I think we're always trying to do stuff that could be feasible to some extent. So it's literally like one of us calling someone else on the team, like, Hey, let's test this out. Does it even work as a step one? Can you think of any, can you think of any that you came up with that you test that you tested and realized, Oh, this, this would derail the story. I think, I think that would be different on surging one. We had a realization about one of one of the ways he was hacking into her, into her Facebook or something the first time, like a two factor authentication or something. We, we basically to answer your question, yeah, we we have realized sometimes, dang, like that doesn't work, and like like we find ourselves like, like you know, and I was saying, I love the idea that when Anish and I write and, and ideate, and all of us as a team, like we should write ourselves into corners because that makes the most compelling story for someone to watch. You know, like we we've all seen movies where you know the how they're going to get out of that situation, but with these movies, because they're such twisty thrillers, like there's a satisfaction in like surprising the audience in a way that's still satisfying, and that satisfaction comes from that makes sense or like that was planted or that's how that thing would work. So like all the time, whether it's in the writing phase or in even in the editing phase on these movies, the our team will find ourselves like in a corner and we're like, dang, like how do we get out of this? Like how do we write our, you know, the character out of this or how do we edit to fix this? And sometimes we'll go literally days where we're like, we're just texting each other. Like, nope, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. And every time right when we lose hope, one person has, they raise their hand. They're like, guys, I figured it out. And we hear the idea, we're like, that's brilliant. And, and that's all what has made, that. that's all in the movie. Like, I remember Will and Nick had this brilliant idea of of the very last beat of the movie. Like, the way June kind of gets out of a situation, whether or not she does. Like, And it was brilliant. And then it was all about us working backwards to, like, plant that and make that as part of the movie and find a way to make that emotional and thematic. Oh, yeah. That was brilliant, by the way. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was really that. smart. <laughs> yeah. And there's occasionally times where there won't be 
tech that exists or an app that exists that does exactly what we need in that moment. But we're very careful to only create like an app or UI if it, first of all, we, we try to make it feel real, step one. Mm-hmm. But step two, it's usually because emotionally we need to convey something and that doesn't exist. For example, in this movie, Lovely, yeah. the dating app is one that mm-hmm. we kind of made up because we were like, we need a texting app that also has a video feature because mm-hmm. we can't see Nia's character and her boyfriend in this montage where they fall in love. We're like, we can't see that just through text. Like, we, mm-hmm. we want to see Nia, we want to see Ken, we want to see them fall in love. So that's one where we created it. But the the kind of like interface of, of the app feels I think grounded in like something yeah. that could exist like down to the when I just I cannot every time because I when they made this I was just like oh my like even the heart when it's loading on those videos mm. like on the I yeah. wanted to sign up for it Dude, like, yeah. How does this work? yeah it's so much thought into every frame of this movie it's so maybe cool we'll take maybe we'll go pitch the app yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'll be the first one in yeah um I, I want to give you guys credit for what I honestly think is one of the best and and most unsettling movie posters I've seen in a long time for people who haven't seen it it's basically uh, an iPhone screen that's a conversation between uh, a, a, a young girl and her mom, basically saying, you know, the, hey, my guys, I'm here. I'm picking you up at the airport. Where are you? You know, hey, it's been a few hours. And those are all blue and delivered. And the very last text, which is green and undelivered, just says mom, question mark. And there's something about, like, I'm getting chills just talking about that. It's just <laughs> a, a one-sided text conversation. But there's something about that poster that when I saw it, I should have went like, oh, I'm sort of curious if what the story behind just the, the poster was because it's such a simple but incredibly unsettling poster. Honestly, we wish we could take all the credit for that, but yeah. that was entirely Sony's amazing marketing. No, 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 just just lie. <laughs> well, but but I will say they've been awesome collaborators. And yeah. Will Merrick, one of our directors and writers, came in with a dynamite note, and that last text used mm-hmm. to be WTF. And, or and, even there was an all caps mom at one point, like mom exclamation no, but it was mark or WTF something. Yeah. We switch mm-hmm. it, yeah. and then Will was like, "It's so much eerier if it's mom question mark and it's and it's mm-hmm. green." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it, so it's like when you're texting someone. Anymore. It's like when you're texting someone with an iPhone and then they get an Android and it turns green. It's like, oh my god! No, oh my, that's, <laughs> that's that's the scariest <laughs> thing of all. I know that's scary. <laughs> uh, um, I want to ask you because there's a uh, there's a, a couple references in the, in the film where like they'll say, "Oh, remember on this show they did this? You should do this as well." And like, and I think at one point Storm goes, "This is you know this is not a show. This is my mom." Um, and I wanted to ask you, and this might be a, a hard question to answer, but has there ever been something from a movie or a show that you've been able to utilize in your real life that's come to you that you were like, "Oh, I can I can work this situation because I saw this in a show or a movie once." That's great. Is it incredibly nerdy to say that we've used the tactics from searching in our real life? <laughs> no. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, searching taught us a lot about yeah. the internet. We were like, oh, shoot. Like, I mean, I think I've never had to use a memorial service online. But, like, yeah. you just have to – you realize when you're writing these things, like, oh, man, I wish there was a feature for this. And then you Google it, and there is. Yeah. And then you start incorporating it a little bit more. I, what, I, I'm what I sure there is. I'm sure there is. I mean, like, this is – I feel so, like breathing techniques I mean, lost. This is, Okay, I <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean one, when they take like the upside down canoe or boat and they like go underwater, but there's still oxygen in there. Mm, yeah. I have that filed away in my head in a very important place where I'm like, I w- I'm gonna one day need this trick. Cause I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's actually like factual. I think that actually would work. Something with physics. We're film majors, so we, you know, I have no. no idea. But that's that's my answer yet to be used. If you watch Ron Verbinski is about to get a associate producer credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The well, that's gross. The podcast is about. We're just adding. We're producers. just adding producers. <laughs> um, I will get you out of here on this one, guys. Uh, and and we appreciate you stopping by the show, and and we really appreciate your time. And and I want to emphasize to everybody uh, who's listening to this how different. Uh, missing feels to searching um and yet there's like a visual language obviously that that is shared between the two and it's kind of cool that the titles that's how i wanted to start there it's cool that the titles are different but once i saw the trailer i was like oh i understand exactly where this is coming from but there's something that also connects the two of them which is that you have compelling leads uh that the audience can really invest in for the adventure first with john and then here with storm and so um as the franchise will i assume continue uh, and you have to search for a third lead what do you guys look for uh in that main character well, when you're um, trying to because it's obviously somebody who's going to be really important to the audience uh, and you want to make sure that they follow along with them. What are the types of qualities that you're building into those characters and then the actors that you find? Good. It's a good question. I mean, I think one of the things we realized early on when we were casting Missing is like John Cho carried searching, you know, like that guy's in front of a laptop for like 90 minutes. 
Um, and we didn't give him a lot to, to, to work with. Um, so we knew we had to find someone that has like the, the gravitas to be able to just hold a frame and like have, have the ability to just like with their eyes, basically keep the viewer hooked in. Um, and then also honestly, like an actor that's just incredibly skilled at the craft and able to, it's such a technically challenging thing for the actors to pull off too. Like it can't be understated how the eye lines are insane and there isn't someone there emoting across from them all the time. And the plot is so complex. So yeah. definitely someone that, you know, someone who's seasoned and, and brings that kind of like weight, I think to any role. And, and, and a sense of bravery because like yeah. it's so alienating and like to do this and have no idea because there was nobody talking to you yeah. if you responded correctly, you know, like mm -hmm. it's just, you completely have to trust the directors in this case of like, yeah, that'll work. That'll cut, you know, cause you're just nope. And at the end of the day, you just, you know, we turn off the laptop lights and you go home. So like, it's, it, it's yeah. a lot of like trust that you just have to be willing to, to give, which only like very, very daring actors, I think belong in our searching cinematic universe. <laughs> well, said, <yeah. laughs> well, we very much look forward to finding, uh, in 2025. <laughs> Uh, executive by Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, when you guys are <laughs> opening scene. <laughs> yeah, when you guys start the pitch meetings, we look forward to being uh, yeah, looped yeah. in. Two so. of you guys have been awarded producers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. both of you are yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See you uh, guys. And again, th thank you guys for coming by the show. We really appreciate it. This was a, such a fun ride. Uh, Missing's really great, and I can't wait for people to get a chance to check it out. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. We want to thank our friends at Sony Pictures and, of course, uh, thank Natalie and Sev and Anish for sitting down for this interview. You know, we uh, speak to directors uh, on the show. Sometimes we get an actor every once in a while. We don't do producers all that often or we don't get the opportunity to do producers all that often. And so we went into this not quite sure what we were going to get, but we're really thrilled at the behind the scenes conversations uh, that this produced. And so maybe we're going to get into uh, interviewing some more creatives behind the scenes as we get into uh, 2023 and beyond, because I thought this was a terrific conversation that talked about not just the nitty gritty of this particular film, but then like the building of a franchise uh, at large. And at a time when, as I kind of mentioned in the interview, you know, you're seeing films like Megan come out and and do really well and stimulate uh, people who are looking for original films and not just the normal IP being churned out. I think Missing is going to connect with that same audience. And so I really love the fact that these guys got a chance to sit down and talk to Real Blend. So uh, as mentioned, if you're a premium subscriber, we had a new uh, episode on Monday, which broke down. This one was so much fun. It was the uh, the Real Blend fantasy draft that we did a year ago and the results came out. The Gabe had the results this year and... <laughs> You guys are going to be uh, blown away by how close those results were. So if you're a premium subscriber and haven't listened to Monday's episode yet, make sure you go check that out. Uh, we will be back on Friday where we're going to be breaking down our most anticipated films of 2023. The hashtag again is most anticipated 2023. And make sure that you uh, tag at Real Blend in your post so we get your answers. We'll read a lot of your selections. We will tell you guys the films we are most looking forward to. Uh, and then hopefully be able to cover those films as the year progresses. So keep it right here. Hit like, hit subscribe, stay with Real Blend, and we will see you guys soon.